Hi, my name's Mason Risley. I'm the other process engineer who works here in the NanoFab. We're here in Process Bay 5 in the lab, which is where our uh, wet decks are located. Uh, and today I'm going to be discussing what to do in the event of an emergency situation in the lab. discussing alarms both on a laboratory scale as well as a local kind of tool specific scale. So to that end, for lab-wide alarms, we have uh, kind of three primary alarms. Fire alarms, hazardous gas detection alarms, and loss of exhaust alarms. But there are two other instances which would dictate an emergency evacuation of the lab that would not elicit an alarm response in the facility. Those include a uh, flood or a power outage. In the event of a lab-wide power outage, be aware that the lights will stay on, but all the other process equipment will go down. Uh, in the event of a lab-wide evacuation, you're going to want to first remain calm. Find uh, the closest emergency exit to you and go through that exit. Don't waste time taking off your gown. Uh, once you're out of the lab and at the kind of safe rendezvous point, that's where you'll be worrying about removing the gown and uh, hopefully staff will be there to kind of coordinate with people. We'll go into more details on this tour on where those emergency exits are and uh, kind of like where the rendezvous points are as well as like other safety features and routes of egress in the lab. Now, why don't we take a look at one of these wet decks and discuss what to do in the event of a local alarm. So these wet decks are equipped with uh, several safety interlocks, uh, which we'll go into uh, during the tour that was done in the lab, and then also uh, wet deck specific tra training discusses other safety features. But for today's example, why don't we just pretend that we're working at the lab and then at the wet deck, and the wet deck shuts down for some reason. So if the wet deck shuts down for some reason, most likely, here we go, we have a failure alarm. You'll notice that this LED panel up here uh, illuminates EPO, emergency power off, and then alarm three. I don't want to go into too much details on what these different alarms mean because they can vary based on the tool that we're at. But you'll notice that the power to the bench is off. If we were a user working at this bench, we would want to get away from the immediate area because our process might be hazardous and we could get exposed to those process hazards. At this point, if I was a user, I would want to go try to uh, either find a staff member in the lab or use one of the lab phones and notify them immediately of what's going on. Notice, however, that the other decks aren't off and also our fire alarms and hazardous gas alarms, which correspond to lab-wide evacuations, are uh, also not triggered. So this type of alarm does not require an evacuation from the lab. However, you will want to notify staff as soon as possible. Uh, you also don't want to work at a bench or a tool that is down like this uh, because those safety features and interlocks might not be functioning properly. Great. So from here, why don't we go ahead and do a demonstration of what a lab-wide evacuation will be. From there, we'll go into the service chase and kind of discuss our different evacuation uh, and egress routes. So let's hear what a hazardous gas alarm sounds like. Okay, here we go. As you can see, we have a red alarm and an audible sound. Again, remain calm. Since we are on this side of the lab, we'll want to go to the nearest exit, leaving our gown on. <laughs> 